Hi there, uh, welcome to this uh, vlog. Um, a couple of vlogs ago, <laughs> I like that word vlog, um, I mentioned something about controls and I got a really interesting question back from Steve and Steve had asked me when I think the correct time to do or perform a control is. Is it as the hands come together? Uh, should you delay? Uh, do it? It all depends on the control you're using, uh, the initial rapport that you built up with your, with your uh, whoever you're performing for, your audience, and it depends on you and how you feel. Because sometimes your hands are feeling good and you can do anything, and other times, well, especially me, I, I, my hands sometimes go, oh, I don't really feel like I can do that, so I just don't do it. I'll do something else. Um, so I think the question is more relevant to when do, when should you do a pass, a shift of some sort, or a side steal. And really, again, it depends on the effect. But the, for me, it really depends on your audience and how they are interacting with you. If they're staring at your hands, which they shouldn't be, then I think that is a problem for the magician. And that's your initial contact with the person or your audience. Now, I'm not talking about paid performances where people are coming to see you, but I'm talking about more informal things. If you're maybe uh, doing a walk-around thing where they don't know there may be a magician there, you may be the person, or you're in a pub or a, a bar. A lot of the time, well, well not the last few months, but uh, I used to meet Gordon Bruce always in a bar, and Gordon would inevitably say, Eddie, show them a trick. Show them a trick. Do something. And you've got to build this initial rapport with the people. You've got to do it. You've got to do it for people you're performing for. Whether you're, and, and I think more so in a, an informal uh, meeting, if you're in a bar or a pub or whatever, in any big bar in the, or any bar in any big city is going to be the same. People, people's attention span is very, very short. The attention span of a gnat, you know, it's just, it just goes like that. So it's all down to your initial contact and your initial rapport with people. You should be looking at them, make eye contact, ask their name, be nice, be polite, and smile. You know, you see people are all very serious about it all. You're doing card tricks. It's not brain surgery. So, you know, uh, uh, and it depends what the situation is. Um, initially, what I do is, from a personal point of view, I perform something that they don't have to contact with. They have no contact with the cards. They're not picking cards. They're not thinking about anything. They're just watching. And that openness and fairness to them, you just say, look, I don't want you to do anything. All I want you to do is watch. You don't have to do anything. And I do a colour change. Uh, I do three colour changes I've just put together in a little short. I mean, it takes 20 seconds, and I've done three colour changes. Uh, and that grabs their attention. Now, if they want to see something else, you're in a good position then. You've built this rapport, this initial eye contact. You've, you're speaking to them. You're in good terms. And you really, you can do anything then. So it really depends on you, your interaction with your audience, uh, and obviously the effect you're trying to uh, portray to your audience. Is it something like an ambitious card where the card goes in the centre, this half goes on top, nothing happens? I think if you're shuffling cards at that point, where you're trying to do an ambitious card, I think that may be the wrong time to do a shuffle. I think it should be more clean. So um, I'm going to touch on a couple of controls. I'm going to touch on a, a pass that I like, that I use. Uh, I use all these controls. Um, and the pass is a dribble pass. We call it a dribble pass. Um, I wouldn't use the word dribble for audiences, but I'm going to go back. So that, let me go back for a second just to when you should do a control. If you've made that initial contact and people are not staring at your hands and you've made that eye contact and they feel relaxed because you're open, your gestures are open and you're a nice person because it's all down to you and your interaction with your, the, the people you're doing the magic for. That's what it's all about. If you've got that, basically I think you can do uh, just about any control because they won't be staring at your hands. So therefore, if, if you do this kind of thing, they see the card. I don't know what that card is. What is it for? A, the Four of Diamonds. Okay, you know, if you're in the right position, you can just come straight over, place the card on top, and there's the card. So that shift, that kind of shift, 
where your hands are just coming to here to uh, square up, you can do it like that. Okay. The other shift I like is a dribble pass. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about language. Don't say I'm going to dribble the cards like this. People don't know what you're talking about. You see magicians all the time. I'm going to dribble cards like this. People talk about dribbling. It's from your mouth. People, real people, do not know about this. So you say, I, the words I would use are, I'm going to drop cards just like this. And you just say stop whenever you like. Look at the hands. It's an open gesture. Say stop whenever you like. You can stop me at the bottom, in the middle, near the top, anywhere. It doesn't matter. And when you use this kind of like open, friendly language, you won't get a lot of um, heat on your hands. You won't, because people just think there's nothing to see. There's nothing, nothing's going to happen. So then you drop the cards. You say, I'm going to drop them. Just say stop. And they say stop. There's a card, the king of hearts. You dribble these on. You say, please don't forget your card. Now, if you've got their name, mention their name. And you say, remember, you, you saw a card in the middle of the pack somewhere. Remember the card. Do you remember it? Yes. So this, for an ambitious card phase, this is what I always did for the first phase was this. A dribble pass. So then you put the cards in their hands. You squeeze and let go. Squeeze, let go. The card moves. That always happens. The card will move anyway. And you ask them the name of the card. They say the King of Hearts. You get them to turn it over. It's in their hands. And the card has come to the top. Now, for us, you go, oh, it's a dribble pass. Fine. Don't use the dribble language. I'm going to drop cards. And that openness in your gestures, you're building trust and rapport with the people. And that's that's the most important thing. And that will dictate what control you use and obviously what effect you're trying to, to come to, what you're trying to get through the effect. So here's another control that, that I use. Um, so this, again, is if you're... You, it's like a one movement control, the card goes in the centre, you, you square this up, and you just push it all the way down. Okay. And it comes to the top. So these controls I discussed in some of the downloads I've got, a pass download for the dribble pass. Here is a nice little control you can use any time. I wouldn't really use this for ambitious card because there's a lot of movement, but you can ask them just to put the finger out. I don't want you to really do anything, just put your finger out. Can you do that? Yeah. And you're open. And you're friendly and you're asking, just put your finger out. So they put the finger out. They touch a card. We'll just say this card, the two of diamonds. And you say, please remember your card. Don't forget it. Jim, don't forget your card. Now, they're going to look at you. They're not going to stare at your hands. You pick the cards up. You just give them this really, really bad jog shuffle. Now, you can point this jog card out if you want. Or you say nothing. You just say, oh, I don't know what that was. And you square these up. Now you've controlled the card. The card's back in the top. So this is a nice control you can use uh, basically any time. Okay, I've also got riffle shuffle controls that because I do a lot of riffle shuffle work on the table. But that's just a little couple of um, uh, controls that you can use uh, or not. Uh, the ambitious card, you can also do a face-up uh, turnover pass if you wanted to do that. So if they named, you have to name a card. You say King of Hearts, you turn the cards over, and the King of Hearts is on the top. So you could do a turnover pass. That's Gordon Bruce's turnover pass. Um, so that's a, a couple of examples of passes, maybe when to use them, uh, and the right kind of language to use. Don't use magician's jargon for real people. You hear people or magicians saying, I'm going to lay the cards out in a T formation, and this card here is the leader ace. What the hell are you talking about? You've got no idea what you're talking about. You just say, listen, I'm going to deal some cards out like this. And I need some cards for this card. Don't, you know, you would use this language. I'm going to lay the cards out uh, in, in this T formation. And this card's a leader A. They've got no idea what you're talking about. Just speak normally. Don't use jargon that magicians use. It's fine for magicians, but not for lay people. Okay, any questions, uh, any comments, let me know. I hope you got something from this. Uh, and thanks for all your responses to uh, all the other vlogs. It's been great. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.